Now, thank you, Sister uh, Cricket, for I really feel like we're now into the Easter season, and uh, Easter 2020 is upon us. And I want to talk to you tonight. I looked at this calendar and the times that I will be preaching as the pastor. Uh, uh, of course, he's, he can say whatever he says is, is we, what we do. Amen. And, uh, but according to our pattern, um, I'll have six messages or six times to preach between now and Easter. And I thought about uh, preaching five times in the book of John, Jesus use the word peace or the word peace is mentioned now i love preaching from the book of john i did a series on the i am statements from the book of john uh later on down the road we might do the seven miracles of the book of john book of john is just an awesome awesome book but there's no question and and even when the pastor our pastor said well, we're going to pray for the coronavirus and so much upheaval so much turmoil and just the prayers that were prayed and the song that was selected, it just seems to be confirmation that we need peace in these troubled times. Amen? And we live in a troubled world. And we all are facing, all of us, in some degree or another, we face various trials and tests, day-to-day -day living. And we know that anxiety and worry is a big problem. In fact, some people are like this lady. This one elderly lady said, she said, quote, I always feel bad. When I feel good. For I know that I'll feel bad sooner or later. Now how many of you know that we as triumphant Christians in this Easter season. We are not to feel bad at any time. God is on the throne. The Lord is up to something. As our pastor said tonight. That righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. But when we consider Easter. Uh, one of the main truths of Easter. One of the main themes of Easter is the message of peace. And I want us to go through uh, these five verses really quick before I get you to stand. And I want you to see that peace is actually in the book of John all in the Easter story. And uh, we see, first of all, in John 14 and 27, which is, I'm going to preach from tonight, the gift of peace. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world giveth, give I to you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then the next time we read of peace is in John 16 and verse 33, again, in the Easter story. It says, these things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now, Jesus has died, and he's now risen. He gives us three more words of peace. Go to John chapter 20, verse 19. And then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled because of fear of the Jews, Jesus came, stood in the midst, and said unto them, Peace be unto you. That's the title of my series, is God's Peace to You. And then in John 20, uh, we see it the last uh, 21, two more verses down. Then Jesus said unto them again. Somebody say again. We need to hear this again. Hallelujah. Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, so send I you. Not only should we receive peace, we should transmit peace. Tell people there's hope in the empty tomb. And then finally, Doubt and Thomas gets a mess, gets a visitor. He has had doubts and, and turmoil and their world was rocked. But look at what Jesus did in John chapter 20, verse 26. And after eight days again... There's that word again. His disciples were within and Thomas with them. And then came Jesus. The doors being shut. You can't keep Jesus out of the shut door. And he stood in the midst and said, he said to Thomas, peace be unto you. And I believe he's saying to you. He's saying to me. He's saying to those who are afraid, those who are facing insurmountable odds, uh, our nation facing viruses and threats. Uh, God is wanting us to say in this Easter season, God's peace is to you. How many of you want to receive that tonight? Would you stand with me as we go to John chapter 14 and verse 27 for our first message of five messages. Peace, God's peace be unto you tonight. Uh, the gift. Somebody say the word gift. John 14 and 27. Read it out loud, everyone. Three, two, one. 
peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We receive the gift of peace. Bless, Lord, the reading of your word and your servant speaking. We praise you for it. And everybody said amen and amen. Turn around to somebody, I am at peace with God tonight. And I want you to give the Lord a hand of praise tonight. He's worthy. He is worthy of all praise. Our text tonight is the first time that we find the word peace in the Gospel of John. It's not an accident where that word is placed of that whole Gospel of John that is on the eve of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord. Now, I want you to go back to the context surrounding that golden word that is given. And I do believe it is a word of gold. The word peace is worth its weight in gold. Now, where are we in John chapter 14? We are in the upper room just before the crucifixion. From chapter 13 of the book of John onward, Jesus is intimately, tenderly, and lovingly speaking to his disciples whose world was about to be rocked. You know, they didn't get it. There was times Jesus said, look, I'm going to die. I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to suffer. It just went over their heads. They just didn't get it. You see, they, they thought he was the Messiah that was going to rule. Yes, but rule now. They couldn't figure out, you mean you're going to die? No, 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 you're not going to die. You're going to rule. Uh, when we hear these words, they're about to be scattered. They're about, they, they are all are about to fail miserably. And so from John 13 to John 17, we call that the upper room discourses, theologically, or the upper room discussions, where Jesus is preparing them for what is about to happen, what they will face presently, what they're going to face ultimately, and what they can expect eternally. Now, just let me give you a backdrop, and then I'll get into tonight's message. But in chapter 13, we find that Jesus is giving, uh, demonstrating his love for his disciples, and he washes their feet. Uh, he identifies the traitor, and he gives them a new commandment, love one another. This is in John 13. Uh, and then he ends John 13 uh, uh, talking about Peter, you will deny me. That's John 13. Then you go into John 14, and I'll get to that in a minute. But over in John 15, he tells them to abide in me, and I will abide in you. He talks to them about staying uh, uh, with him uh, through the test and the challenges. And most importantly, he will stay with them forever. In John 16, he introduces the coming of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to leave. Uh, it's expedient that I go away, but I'm coming again. And then he caps it off uh, in John 17, uh, that intimate night uh, with that high priestly prayer. Lord, I pray for them, uh, and I may do that on my sixth message as a message on that high priestly prayer um, after the five pieces uh, that I give you. But when you go back to John 14, remember John 13 ends with Peter's going to fall. And then John 14 begins with what? Verse 1 says, he says, you're going to fall, Peter. But then John 14, 1 says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe, you're all going to fall. You're all going to mess up. And so we have the mention of peace. Uh, he gives him, he gives them the I am statement of verse 6 of John 14. I am the way, the truth, uh, and the life. Uh, and then go to John 14 and verse 27. We come to our text. On the eve of their world being rocked, on the eve of them falling and, and failing, on the eve of the worst days of their lives, uh, on the eve of everything going crazy, Jesus says the first word peace, the first peace word that we find. He says, peace, I leave with you. Can you say amen tonight? After all of that turmoil and after all that's about to come, after all that will come, Jesus said, I'm going to give you something. He said, my peace. Now, it's very important because a little bit later in this message, I'm going to tell you about that peace. He said, my peace, I give to you. It is a gift. Now, what is peace? What exactly is peace? I heard of a, a contest in which the artists were to su submit paintings and uh, sculptures of their understanding of peace. So several artists and painters, they said, well, we want you to paint what you think peace is. And the winner of that contest had painted a bird in a nest protruding from a branch 
that was over a raging waterfall. And boy, I think that's, that's a good explanation of peace. A bird in a branch on its nest overneath the raging waterfall. But listen, that's a good image, but God has even better. Galatians chapter 5 and 22, we know peace is the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, and what? Peace. And in Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 says, and the peace of what? Which passes what? And it shall keep your hearts and minds. Go to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14. Listen, peace is not a bird in a nest over a branch over a raging waterfall, that's, that's a good symbol of peace. But really, Ephesians 2 and 14, He is our peace. So to know Jesus is to know peace. Know Jesus, know peace. K-N-O-W, know Jesus, you know peace. And I'm glad tonight to know that, that in this day of terrorism, in this day of viruses, this day of shock and all, uh, that He is my peace. Uh, he rose from the dead. Uh, he is victorious. Uh, and He's given me hope uh, in the midst of the storm. Uh, His name is Jesus. Uh, he is our peace. Uh, will you receive the gift of peace tonight? Would you praise Him uh, for peace in the midst of the storm? Oh, I'm talking about temporal peace. I'm talking about present peace. I'm talking about eternal peace uh, forever in the sweet by and by and in the nasty now and now. Now, that's what I want to talk about. Peace now. I know there's peace in heaven. Oh, glory. One some glad morning. Um, will the circle be unbroken? Uh, sweet Beulah land. We sing about peace to come. Friend, I'm here to tell you, God wants to give you peace now, this moment, presently. It is a gift. Say that with me. It is a gift. Now, I want to give you three things about the gift of peace tonight. That first time that Jesus mentions peace in the book of John. First of all, the point one, the gift of peace should be accepted. You got to accept it. Just like any other gift. Go back to John 14 and 27. He said, I give unto you. Are we there? John 14 and 27. That's a gift. In other words, I'm giving you peace. I'm giving you a gift. And you got to choose to accept that gift. You have to choose peace when things aren't very peaceful. I'm going to say that again for those of you type A personalities. Always frittering about. Nervous. High blood pressure, not because of medical reasons, but because of uh, spiritual reasons, when you're disappointed. Now, I thought about this comparison. Uh, not long ago, I gave a, a Christmas gift to someone, uh, or maybe it was a birthday gift. I can't remember. I gave a gift to someone. I think it was Christmas. And I'm not going to tell you who it was. I'm going to tell you what it was. Darnell and I, we gave a gift to someone, and I just knew they would be all excited about it. I just couldn't wait to see them tear into the present. I just couldn't wait to see the glow on their face. And I remember we went to a restaurant and we said, here's your gift. And they opened the gift and it was as blank as a white sheet of paper. It wasn't any excitement. And I was so disappointed because I wanted to see. Now, I think the person liked the gift, but when I have to ask five times, do you like it? I'm not very convinced. <laughs> and there's some of you God's given you a gift called peace, and by the way you're acting, you don't like that gift either. You got to receive it with joy. You got to tear into it, glory to God. You got you to shut out the voices of doubt and pestilence. You got to cut off that fake news, amen? God's on the throne, hallelujah. You got a gift, and you're to be at peace. You're not to be, well, I'm so nervous, and I, I'm this, that. You know I have a gift. You ain't received your gift. A Christian's talking about, well, my nerves are shot. Quit talking like the world. The world would say, walk around. My, my aunts and my uncles and, and, and my cousins, sometimes my uh, unsaved family, they would walk around, well, I'm so nervous, and my nerves are shot. Well, listen, if I'm on my way to hell, your nerves need to be shot, Amen. I know the peacekeeper, glory to God. Well, you don't know what my work conditions are, but I know who my Savior is. And up from the grave, he arose, a mighty triumph over his foes. Oh, thank God, it's a gift, and we need to receive it. Well, you don't know what the doctor said. You don't know. I know what the great physician did, amen? 
I accept that gift. Now, now this is even more intimate. Now, I, I'll talk to you about a gift that we gave a friend. But take this a little further in this illustration. Let's say my wife, you know, husbands and wives. And so you buy your wife. Men, you buy your, man, you get a, you get a diamond ring and, and, and you, you put money into it and, and you wrap it up. And I mean, this is your loved one. This is, you know, the person I talked to a while ago wasn't even family. Uh, but I'm talking about my wife. I'm talking about my family. I'm talking about somebody who I love. And man, I, I'm like, oh, I want her to be so happy. I want her to really love this. And, and, uh, and so just imagine over a candlelight dinner and, and you say, here, sweetie, here's the gift. Uh, I, I, you've put in money to it. You've put thought into it. And same thing. She opens it up, looks at it. It's a diamond ring. I don't care what it is. And she looks at it. She puts it down and keeps on eating her food. What? Let me tell you something. The Lord loves you. He wants to be intimate with you. And he's given you a wonderful gift. That's better than a diamond ring. That's better than anything you can get at the shopping mart. I want you to know we must accept that gift. When we choose fear... We reject the gift of peace. When we choose gossip, we reject the gift of peace. Oh, yeah, gossip is a sin. We talk about adultery, fornication, lust, gay marriage. We talk about the, that political party. We, we run down them. But I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not a certain political party. Yeah, they have a part to play in it. But I think what's destroying churches more than the radical gay agenda is a bunch of church gossips uh, who keep running down this and running down that. And I, music's this and preacher's that. Uh, and I know I'm not talking to anybody guilty about that here tonight. <laughs> but this is going over live stream. So I just want to throw it out there. When you choose the gossip, uh, you're rejecting peace. You want to stir up trouble in a church? Uh, start gossiping. Uh, sounds like a, a snake, doesn't it? Uh, you don't need to talk about people uh, uh, unless you're willing to talk to people. Amen. Uh, I'll never say anything about you that I will not say to you. Uh, if not, then that is gossip, uh, and it'll take peace from your life. Uh, what about murmuring? When you murmur and complain, you're rejecting the gift of peace. I don't like it when gas goes up to $4.50 a gallon and people just murmur, complain, complain, complain. I know it's high. I know it hits the bottom line. I know. But friends, uh, uh, listen, we don't need to murmur and complain about. We are. Do you know, realize that most of the people that's ever lived never even have had an automobile? Uh, j well, I don't know if I better make it at church, Pastor. A uh, gas is so high. Calvary was high. He paid a high price. Uh, fill her up and I'll see you at church. I have no idea where that came from. Because actually gas is low now. <laughs> Praise God, I went to Rocky Mountain today and saw it for $1.85. Woo, I came to Wilson. I said, I got to fill up, and it was $1.99. I didn't let it steal my peace, though. I filled her up. Amen. When we take worry, we reject peace. So, number one, he's given you a gift, and bless the Lord, he died for that gift. He bled for that gift. He was ashamed for that gift and for you to not have peace in your heart and you'd allow the troubles of this world to disrupt your spirit. To, oh, it saddens him. And oh, my father, I want to receive the gift. So number one, the gift of peace should be accepted. Number two, the gift of peace should be appreciated. Not only accept it, but be thankful for it. That's something you can't buy in a bottle. You know how high medicine is? Now, we're not going to murmur about that, are we? People say, well, medicine is so high. Well, don't take it. Well, I got to take it to live. Well, then, then, then you, you're not thankful you can be. I don't care what the price is. You got to pay the price. Somebody's got to make it. Listen, we, we got to appreciate gift, the gift of peace. You see, this isn't, I just want you to understand. He said, my peace. Go back to John 14, 27. Please, this is powerful. He said, my peace. Wow. Now, shalom, peace. Now, listen, this is good. Shalom is the Jewish word for peace. And it's a precious word to the Jewish people. It means much more than just the absence of war or distress. You see, when you say peace to the Jew or when you say shalom, uh, what it really means is wholeness. Completeness, 
Amen. Isn't that good? So when we think of peace in America, Americans, we think, well, uh, just peace is just I got a, a, a nice sunny day at the, at the beach. No, peace means wholeness, completeness, health, security. It even, listen to this, shalom means prosperity in the best sense. Woo, I'm liking that peace more and more. Amen. When you are enjoying God's peace, there is joy and contentment. But God's peace is not like the peace that the, the world offers. You see, the world bases its peace on its resources. While God's peace depends on your relationship with Him. The world has certain resources. They can give you a pill. They can give you, uh, uh, maybe if you go to get a relief from a tax or something. But to be right with God means to enjoy the peace of God. Now, the world depends on personal ability, but the Christian depends on their spiritual adequacy in Christ. In the world, peace is something you hope or work for. Oh, if I can just make a little money, if I can just get a good doctor's report, I'll have peace. You're working for it. But to the Christian, peace is God's gift received by faith. Unsaved people enjoy peace when they don't have trouble. Christians enjoy peace in spite of trials. Well, let me give you the Greek word for peace. Now, I don't have it on the notes up on the overhead, but, and it's hard to pronounce, but it's spelled E-I-R-E-N-E, -E -E, almost like the word serene, but without the S, irene, irene. And the Greek word for peace, that word irene, actually means to bind. Now, you think, well, that's kind of odd, you know, the word bind, the word irene. How did they get peace out of that? Well, think about it, to bind. To be in union, you know? In other words, this is, this is just this is shouting ground. It's, it's like peace is in the sense of harmony. Two people, you know, if you're married and one, you're out with each other, you know, you're in, a, you're in a marriage union, but there's not a lot of peace there. But, but when a husband and wife are together, oh, there's peace in the home. Amen. Uh, same thing with churches. Same thing with uh, work. Uh, you know, I've been in the workplace where there was su such division. But so that word union, that word bind, is correctly translated peace. And, uh, and, and, I, and I think of it like this. You know, <laughs> Jesus, bind. <laughs> he has bound me. I, I, I'm bound to God. He has wrapped his arms around me. Put his love all around me. He, he uh, 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 sent his word. He, what's the word? I'm looking, there's a scripture that says he... he uh, in, in the book of Song of Solomon, he took me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. You see, when I'm in union with Christ, what can take away my peace? It's like somebody picks on you in the schoolyard, and you're just a little 90-pound nothing, and bones. And then the bully picks on you, but then your seventh-grade brother who's got muscles says, what's going on here? You know what? There's a lot of peace turns right around. Amen. He is my elder brother. I'm in, I'm bound with Christ. Uh, he is, he has wrapped me with his cords of love. Uh, that's it. He brought me to the banquet house. He wrapped me with cords of love uh, and he drew me unto himself. Uh, uh, that we used to sing an old song in the Pentecostal church. Uh, I'm wrapped up, uh, tied up, uh, tangled all up in Jesus. Brother, if you're really wrapped up uh, and tied up, you have peace. Uh, you're bound with him. Uh, you're in union with him. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Uh, oh, my friend, I am in agreement that he is my peace uh, and devil you can pick on me uh, but I'm bound to Jesus uh, and he can take care of you yeah. don't you appreciate that yeah. oh give him praise here tonight hallelujah that I'm bound uh, with the Lord nothing happens to me that doesn't really happen for me amen In Jeremiah 29 and 11 and I've quoted this, and I told you about the time I was in a meeting, and one of our, a good friend of mine, who I greatly respect, he cautioned us that Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of, uh, of what? Woo! I, I, I've read that scripture a hundred times, and then it, the word peace just jumped out. Thoughts of peace. Amen. 
to, to give you an expected end. And, and this, this dear brother said, we misquote that. That's really not for you personally. That was for the nation of Israel for long ago. And I'm like, what? Well, it ain't for long ago. It's for tonight. It's for this Easter. <laughs> it's because I'm bound with Christ. Oh, John Piper. He stated that the roots of the cross reach back before creation into the eternal Godhead where God the Son has always infinitely loved God the Father. Peace, Christians are, listen, peace, Christians are offered through the Son surpasses all human understanding for this fruit from the Holy Spirit is the very same peace that God the Father and God the Son have eternally shared with one another. I love that. God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. There's peace and harmony in the triune Godhead. That's peace, brother. That's assurance. That's nothing going to wrinkle me. Nothing going to move. I want you to know that's the peace that he said you're, I'm going to give you. And we ought to accept it and we ought to appreciate it. Can we appreciate it right now? The gift of peace. Amen. <laughs> And then, thirdly, the gift of peace not only is accepted, appreciated, it should be applied. This is kind of kind of with point one, but a little bit deeper. Uh, you've got to apply peace. Go back to John 14 and 27 because we may miss this. John 14 and verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Let's say that together. Let not your heart be troubled. I don't think there was a suggestion there. I don't think it was, well, you guys are going through the toughest time of your life. You don't even know us. Like Chuck Schumer said the other day to the two judges, which was an absolute threat. and said, you're not going to know what hits you. I promise you, Chuck Schumer, you don't know what's about to hit you, by my friend. Because God's hand is about to knock y'all upside the head. I'm telling you. I, I think it's illegal for a senator to threaten the Supreme Court. And if it was the other way around, I'd feel the same way. We are, demo we're, we're, you know what it is? That party, they don't want democracy. They want a dictatorship. And they call good evil and evil good. And it's lies, 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 lies. And folks, this is not the old days of, of FDR and Social Security and good people. We're talking about this is lines drawn in the sand here. And if you're any bit of a discerning Christian, you've got to know that, that that's a threat. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus didn't say if you feel like it. Jesus didn't say, I would appreciate it if you think about it. He didn't say, I know your world's about to be turned upside down and there's a possibility. He said, no, I know your world's about to be turned upside down and I command you, let not your heart be troubled. Would that be something if as a pastor, we walked into the, to the uh, waiting room at the hospital and we said, I got a word from the Lord. He's commanded you to let not your heart be troubled. Now quit letting your heart be troubled. Now we wouldn't say it like that, but that's exactly what he's saying here. He's not, he's not giving you a, a multiple choice here. He said, don't let your, in other words, somebody said it like this. Somebody said, I would no more worry than to blaspheme God's name. One great Christian said, no more than I would curse, no more than I would commit adultery, than I would allow myself to worry. Because worry is a sin. Unbelief is a sin. And when we worry, we, we are, it's a form of sin. I, we talk about, again, gay marriage. We talk about these other things. But those of us who give ourselves to worry, and we all struggle with worry. I'm not telling you that, that there, we ought not to have concern. I'm concerned about certain things, but that's as far as it goes. When I begin to worry about it, I begin to, to sin against the Lord. He's commanded me. He said, Ricky, do not let your heart be troubled. Uh, well, you just don't know what I'm going through. You just don't know what's happened to me. I said, I'm commanding you. We know what commands mean. You got to apply it. You got to do it. You got to obey. You got to salute and say, yes, Lord, uh, I will 
will not. You, tell, you got to do like the, the psalmist said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, uh, and all that's within me. Uh, uh, you've got to tell yourself. You've got to, you've got to, uh, David, the Bible says, encouraged himself in the Lord. He obeyed that command. He said, I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. Uh, I'm not going to let it be afraid. Uh, what the devil has stolen, uh, I shall recover all. Uh, I've got a book. Uh, I've got the promises of God. I've got the Spirit of God. I've got the body of Christ and prayers and believers. Uh, I I'm, I'm serve a mighty God. Uh, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Uh, I said, what am I? Let not your heart be troubled. I serve a God that says, I'll bless you in the country and I'll bless you in the city. I serve a God that said, one of you shall chase a thousand and two shall put 10,000 to flight. I serve a God uh, that raised up David's mighty warriors and one man stood and killed 900 Philistines with one hand. I, I want you to know when you read the book of, you, I'm reading through the Old Testament again. And I'm telling you, it's faith everywhere. Son, stand thou still uh, in the valley. Praise God. When you're in the valley, God can cause time uh, to work in your favor. Uh, he is, uh, I said, let the not your heart be troubled. Uh, you need to apply it, praise God. We need to quit our belly aching uh, and start our praising uh, and quit and reject the sin. Uh, oh, we, we would never drink alcohol. Uh, we would never smoke a cigarette unless, you know, we some, some struggle with it. But we would never do it with a good conscience. Uh, I want you to know I'm not going to let my heart be troubled. I'm going to trust him uh, even when things don't go just right. You got to apply that truth. Amen. At the close of the Civil War, a troop of federal cavalry were riding along the road between Richmond and Washington. Suddenly, they saw a poor, wretched sol soldier clothed in ragged remnants of the Confederate uniform. He came out of the bush. He called to the captain of the federal cavalry unit who drew in and waited for him. He said to the Union soldier, he said, can you help me? I'm starving. Can you give me some food? Starving to death, the Union captain said, why don't you just go up to Richmond and get what you need? The soldier explained, I do not dare go into Richmond because if I did, I would be arrested. Three weeks ago, I became so discouraged because of our losses in the, in the Confederate Army that I deserted the Army. And I've been hiding in the woods ever since. I'm gradually trying to make my way north, hoping for a chance to break through to the Federal lines. If I should be caught by my Southern soldiers... I would be shot for deserting the army in a time of war. The captain said, Sir, haven't you heard the news? What news? Why, the war is over. Peace has been made. General Lee surrendered to General Grant at Appomattox two weeks ago. The Confederacy is over. What? The soldier said, Peace has been made for the last two weeks, and I've been here starving. And hiding in these woods? I tell you, peace has got to be applied. There's a lot of folks starving and hiding in the woods of discouragement. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. Friend, the war is over. He is victorious. He is resurrected from the dead. Now, I may go through some battles. I may go through some trials. But I'm fighting not to get victory. I'm fighting because I've already got victory. And when I win, the sweeter, the victory's even sweeter. Uh, somebody praise him for peace uh, that passes all understanding. You got to apply it. You got to apply it. Now, here's a good one. As I close, Brother Ricky, come to the piano. Years ago, I love this, in the pioneer days of aviation, a pilot was making a flight around the world. And he had been gone for some two hours from his last landing field, and he heard a noise on his plane, which he recognized as the gnawing of a rat. He realized that while his plane had been on the ground, a rat somehow had gotten in. And for all he knew, the rat could be gnawing through a vital cable that controls the plane. And this was a very serious situation, and he was concerned and anxious. At first, he didn't know what to do. It was two hours back to the landing field from which he had taken off, and more than two hours to the next. And that old rat could chew in and take him down. And all of a sudden, he realized that the rat is a rodent. And rats are not made for heights. They can't survive it. It is 
made to live on the ground and under the ground. Therefore, the pilot began to climb. He went up a thousand feet, then another thousand, till he went all the way up to 20,000 feet, and the gnawing stopped. The rat was dead. He could not survive in the atmosphere of those heights. More than two hours later, the pilot brought the plane safely to the next landing field, and he found the dead old rat. And I want to tell you, worry is like a rat in your heart and in your mind. If you leave that rat of worry, it'll gnaw you. Have you ever had things just to gnaw on you? Sometimes I'll sit in church and things will just gnaw on me. It's like, devil, you a liar in the name of Jesus. It'll gnaw on you until it steals your joy and your power and your energy. But the rodent of war, worry cannot live in the secret place of the Most High. It cannot breathe in an atmosphere that is steeped in prayer. Worry dies when we ascend to the Lord through prayer. I'm telling you, peace, you've got to apply it. To just get a little higher in God. Just get a little higher in praise. Come on up to higher altitudes. You are made to soar and fly like If you got that old rat on your plane, you just keep climbing higher in worship, higher in love, higher in the praises of God, higher in the anointing. And I promise you that old rat he can't survive the heights he's made for the ground he's gonna die and some of you if you've got that old rat gnawing in your life get higher with God and let's receive the gift of peace why don't you give him praise here tonight I'm going higher Easter 2020, I'm going higher in God. I want to be deeper in prayer, higher in faith. I don't want, I'm not made for the lowlands of this world. I'm seated with Him in heavenly places. Praise God, things are looking up. And I'm not going to stay down around on the ground of murmuring and complaining and let the rats gnaw out all of my faith. And I'm not going to keep my eyes on this surface world. I've got my eyes. And Jesus said on that fateful night when all hell was about to break loose, He said, he said, I'm giving you peace that passes all understanding. Would you stand with me tonight? The greatest peace of all is knowing Jesus Christ is your Savior. The martyr was going to, the, to be killed. He was going to be executed for his faith. He said, put your hand here, said the martyr to his executioner. When he was led to the stake. Put your hand here. And now put your hand on your own heart. And feel which beats the hardest. And which is most troubled. And strangely. The executioner was struck with awe. For he found that the Christian man was as calm. As though he were going to a wedding feast. While he himself the executioner. Was having all agitation about what he was getting ready to have to do. Can you just praise him tonight? That's peace, brother. Put your hand on your heart tonight. Come on, do it. Come on. Amen. Put your hand on your heart tonight. Say, I'm going to receive that gift. <laughs> I'm not going to let that heart be troubled. Come on. Amen. Amen. Come on and praise him. Now, come Hallelujah. on higher tonight. Glory to God. I said, come on higher. Tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on higher tonight. We love you, Lord. We praise you. Jesus said, Peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Where is like a rocking chair? Give you something to do, won't get you anywhere. That's right. Let's sing and worship God. Hallelujah. You are great. You're a great one, Lord. You do me miracles so great. There is no Love one you, else Jesus. like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. else like you come on higher tonight there is no one else like you you deserve the glory come on higher and the honor apply that peace tonight lift our hands in worship 
As we lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. Oh, you are, I'm at peace tonight. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. 